AI image upscaling has been mainstream ever since NVIDIA launched their Turing GPUs. And with the release of its proprietary deep learning super sampling, it's been a popular feature since its release. While in its initial iteration, things were kind of rough, with the 2.0 version, things became much more impressive. However, because it's one of NVIDIA's black box pieces of tech, it only runs on the latest three generations of their cards, cutting out some of the more popular cards such as their own Pascal and Maxwell lineups, and even cards from their competitors. With Intel's introduction to the discrete graphics card market, they brought with them their new competitor to DLSS, ZSS, and this runs on almost every other somewhat modern card on the market. Before we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to leave a comment if there's something you think I missed in this video. I can't cover every aspect of ZSS in a single video, but I felt like it was most appropriate to discuss what ZSS does, briefly dive into how it works, and then finally do a visual comparison. I'm not a machine learning engineer, so I can't go into tons of specifics about how the software works and the architecture of it, but I can more so explain how the hardware achieves what the software engineers are writing. Without any further ado, let's dive into Intel Z Super Sampling and see what kind of performance gains it enables. For those of you unfamiliar with upscaling technologies, let's dive into what Super Sampling accomplishes. In the traditional, most simple sense, Super Sampling is a method of taking multiple samples of pixels from a larger image and averaging them together into a smaller image. Usually you'd see this done with scaling a 4K image down to 1080p, and when done properly, it can improve the sharpness of an image and provide an anti-aliasing effect. In fact, supersampling is used in many different anti-aliasing algorithms. But if you've ever run a supersampling algorithm, you know that it's incredibly computationally intensive. What ZSS does is fill in these supersamples with data generated by a machine learning algorithm, instead of taking them natively from the game environment. This allows the hardware to render at a lower internal resolution and fill in additional details to give a native presentation. This approach is more similar to NVIDIA's with DLSS, but is different from AMD's implementation of FSR. Comparing and contrasting Intel's and AMD's technologies, we see that AMD's algorithm is a simple yet effective spatial upscaler, which is simply an additional shader running on top of the game. FSR is much easier to implement as it doesn't need as much information from the game engine to work its magic, whereas Intel and NVIDIA's tech require motion vectors, asset detail information, and other mathematical data in order to provide its upscale, though it is admittedly better looking. Okay, so if DLSS already exists and has some widespread adoption, why does Intel ZSS matter? Well, unfortunately NVIDIA locks their DLSS implementation to run on their proprietary tensor cores meaning you'll need one of their GPUs from the last three generations to take advantage of this software tech, automatically making any other card prior to Turing unable to run it. This brings the need to bring to market a solution that runs on standard instructions available on most GPUs, and not requiring a specialized core. The kind of calculations you'd need to do to implement these AI algorithms is utilize matrix multiplication and convolutions, which while I can't speak as to the technicalities on how they work, I am aware that you need to develop special libraries that utilize certain instructions to enable performant implementations. What you need to do these kinds of calculations are vector dot product and adds, which can be accelerated through the use of DPA instructions introduced on NVIDIA's Pascal cards, as well as AMD's RDNA 1, 2, and presumably 3. On Intel's cards, they utilize the XMX cores, which are roughly analogous to NVIDIA's Tensor cores. But if the XMX cores aren't available, ZSS falls back to a DP4A implementation, enabling it to run on cards other than Intel's offerings. I would suspect this is so the technology can run on older cards as Intel isn't exactly a powerhouse when it comes to the discrete GPU market yet, and they want to give ZSS the widest possible hardware options to help adoption. This makes sense and ultimately benefits the consumer, and it also gives me something else interesting to test. ZSS comes with four different setting modes, with each of them rendering the game internally at progressively lower resolutions. Ultra quality provides the highest quality upscale, but also renders the game at the highest resolution of all the options, meaning you lose a lot of the performance. Keep in mind though that the more pixels you feed into the algorithm, the more accurately it can synthesize data, meaning as we lower the internal resolution, the quality of the upscale will decrease as well. 
On the performance setting, if I recall correctly, the internal render resolution is set to be half on each access, meaning that we render a 1080p image if our resolution is set to 4K, and the ZSS algorithm upscales the image. Let's take a look at some footage comparing the different settings in a somewhat new release that supports the tech, Modern Warfare 2, as well as get an idea as to how it helps performance. Just comparing right off the bat, ZSS when set to ultra quality mode looks comparable, if not better in some cases, than native rendering. Looking here comparing ZSS ultra quality and native, you can see that in some ways, specifically when it comes to detail at a distance, ZSS is more clear and defined and seems to handle transparencies on the same level of DLSS. Turn the internal resolution down to quality, and now we see some slight shimmering on distant objects, but it's not all that bad or noticeable unless you're looking for it. Up close the detail is still retained well, and edges still look sharp enough to pass for native 4K when in motion. Lowering the resolution further down to balanced, we see details breaking up in the distance, and up close transparencies are still handled pretty well and there aren't any artifacts that you would expect to be there that are present in other AI upscaling algorithms. Moving into the performance mode, and details at a distance are obviously breaking up, and the transparencies up close aren't as sharply defined. If I had to choose between playing at 1080p on a 4K monitor or ZSS performance mode, I would choose ZSS performance mode because it looks better than raw 1080p upscaled by the monitor. If I really wanted to cherry pick though, looking at the edge of the player's hands and weapon, they look kind of smudgy and the definition for them changes from frame to frame when zoomed in. It's not like you'll be staring at your monitor with a 7x zoom, but it shows the technology it works, and this just proves that it's doing what we want it to. The changing definition is the algorithm interpolating from the pixels given, and it gives it this Quake 2 vertex wobbling kind of look. Once again, I want to stress that you won't notice this unless you zoom in to a high degree, but overall it usually manifests in softer details. In gameplay, it's probably not likely that you'll have the time to sit there and compare the graphics, but going to performance mode, I was definitely able to tell that it was not native resolution, as the image wasn't as sharp as the balanced or quality modes. Like previously mentioned, it's still superior to native 1080p, so it might be worth looking into if you're running a weaker graphics card on a higher resolution monitor. Speaking of, how does ZSS affect performance, and what can you expect from a non-Intel GPU? Starting off, I got these numbers from the base Modern Warfare 2 Invasion game mode, as it shows off systems present from the Warzone mode, as well as a high number of players and AI. I played at the high settings and ran my 3070 Ti paired with my 11700K. It's not the fastest CPU, but for what we're looking at, the CPU won't really be as important once we get to 1440p and beyond. Starting off at 1080p, and we're obviously bottlenecked because the resolution is too low. If you're playing at 1080p, it's probably best to just run at native resolution, because if you don't, you may run into the CPU bottlenecks. This really affects the quality of your frame rate, because while a GPU bottleneck usually manifests itself in overall depressed frame rates, a CPU bottleneck manifests in inconsistent and erratic frame times. This can be seen in the 1% lows, because while they improved a little in the quality mode, they didn't improve much on the balanced and performance mode. ZSS actually also made our average frame rates worse as we turned the internal resolution down, until we got to performance, where we saw identical performance to native. This is once again due to a CPU bottleneck, so if you're rocking MW2 at 1080p, it might not be worth turning it on as it will only reveal a CPU bottleneck. At 1440p, the scaling observed aligned much more closely with the expectations set forth by the technology, and this is probably due to us not exposing a CPU bottleneck as directly. The averages scaled quite nicely as we lowered the internal resolution, as did the 1% low, however with a lower percentage. I also suspect that we still ran into some sort of bottleneck on the performance setting, as the 1% low actually decreased. If you're able to run this game comfortably at 1440p native, then turning on ZSS on the ultra quality mode might not be that bad of an idea, as you'll get superior image quality. For 1440p, this tech really starts to shine, as with 1080p, there just seems to not be enough information available to make a proper sharp upscale. For all the settings at 1440p, the image upscale quality was noticeably improved over 1080p upscales, which comes naturally with increasing the internal render resolution but also seems to work better just with more information available. 
1440p might be worth using ZSS with, though keep in mind that the performance gains do seem to taper off once you lower the render resolution to the performance mode. 4K saw the most drastic performance improvements, with all the settings providing a nice bump to the average frame rates. 1% lows also scaled with the averages, however not as drastically, leading me to believe that ZSS helps most with the performance on average but doesn't really improve the 1% lows as much, at least on non-Intel hardware. The average though went from a roughly stable 60fps experience to hanging out around the upper 80s and low 90s. Keep in mind though that there were still some frame drops, and like I said in my review of the 3070 Ti, I suspect the particle effects are what are causing these frame drops because during gameplay I didn't really notice any drastic or sudden drops to performance while alive and playing. ZSS works exceptionally well for scaling up to 4K, and even at the performance mode, things looked more sharp than rendering at the lower resolution and upscaling based on a cubic or nearest neighbor algorithm. It shows that this tech is meant more for upscaling at higher resolutions, such as 4K, rather than upscaling to 1080p. Like NVIDIA's DLSS, this algorithm quality scales well as you increase your input resolution, though I do wonder how the performance uplift would change on Intel's cards. Like I discussed previously in this video, if you're rocking an Intel discrete GPU, ZSS will make use of the XMX cores on die, which are 1024-bit matrix units used to apply functions over 2D matrices, rather than 1D vectors like on a traditional GPU shader core. This should help to improve performance on Intel cards, but for those of us who don't use Intel, we have to use the DP4A implementation, which while still functional and graphically sharp, means we lose some performance as opposed to Intel's native XMX utilizing version. I also would like to note once again that ZSS didn't really help out at the 1% lows as much as it did with the average, meaning that stuttering wasn't eliminated or helped all that much by using it. This is probably because I'm not running the game on Intel hardware, but for the majority of end users, they don't run Intel dedicated GPUs, so this performance is what they'll see. I think overall though that ZSS is an awesome technology that rivals NVIDIA's DLSS. Intel being the size that it is, has the software engineering talent and grunt to be able to implement AI image upscaling algorithms properly and performantly, and this first version of ZSS proves that they're on the right track. When comparing to DLSS 2, ZSS looks slightly worse, but when comparing to DLSS 1, it looks significantly better. Most of the issues I complain about are only noticeable when you're pixel peeping, which in reality won't be happening most of the time. If I had to sum up my thoughts on ZSS, it's that it provides a high quality image upscale similar to DLSS, while delivering performance improvements less than those found with DLSS. Running on an Intel card would definitely help performance, but if you're running a Pascal or newer NVIDIA GPU or an RDNA 1 or newer AMD GPU, then you get access to a DLSS-like feature without having to pay a premium to use said feature. If you're on a 1070 or 1080 and you're struggling to push the frames you want your system to push, then ZSS might be a viable option and it can help extend the life of your system for a few more months as you wait for prices to continue to drop. On my Titan X Pascal, I use this feature to push 1440p, and speaking from experience, as well as the data presented, it works pretty well, and I can't wait to see where they take the technology next. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know what your impressions of Intel ZSS are, and if you plan on running it in games that support it. For me, since I have an NVIDIA Ampere card, DLSS works better and is faster, so it's probably what I'll be using most of the time, but ZSS is definitely something that I like to run on my Titan X Pascal. That's all I really have to say, and thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.